Hello. This is going to be um, a few short videos uh, during my experience on learning how to use this Rockwell 21120. Uh, this is the model that has, hold on, let me turn that light out back here in the back. Okay, this is the model that has the milling head uh, as an accessory, uh, but it's actually a horizontal mill. Uh, I've disassembled uh, both the cross table on the carriage, uh, the knee, cleaned them up. Uh, the only thing wrong with them, I'm very lucky, uh, was the uh, grease was so old that it had dried out. Uh, I don't believe this machine has been used a whole lot. Uh, its previous owner, or most recent owner, I should say, um, was a woodworker. And I have not found gummed up wood anywhere on the machine. I found signs of it being used for woodworking, but uh, nothing bad. So, to, uh, to get started, uh, the best source of information I found on this machine so far uh, is an Army, a U.S. Army uh, manual on the three different machines that Rock will put out. They're all three in the manual. I downloaded it from uh, vintagemachinery.org online. Uh, I have donated a little bit of money and I'll continue to do so because they're a very good source of information. Uh, it's a PDF file and then I printed it and put it in a binder. Uh, so that's a good source of information. Uh, there's one other gentleman on YouTube that has uh, added some of his on there. Um, but not a lot of information on how this machine works. So let's, for this video, the primary purpose is going to be the back gears. Um, in order to get the back gears to work, you come over here on the side next to the power switch here. And you'll see a sign that says if you push this lever in, um, your direct drive. Direct from the belt to the spindle to the turning tool. In here there's a transmission with reduction gear. I call them reduction gears, navy term, um, back gears. If you pull this handle out, which you'll notice it only goes so far and stops. I couldn't even get it to do that till last night when I disassembled this. I'll explain what this is in a moment. There's another one just like it on the other side. What you have to do is remove this plate. I have it laying down so that you can see in here. That plate goes here on the back. Now I'll turn the light on. Um, okay. In order to put this into back gears, um, there's a grip right here. Uh, it looks like a spring. It's not. It's a solid piece of steel. There are three grooves. I don't think my camera's going to pick that up, so let me see if I can rotate this around a little bit. If you look, there's three notches right there. If I pull this out, like that, you'll see the notch came out with it. Leave this out. Don't push it back in. And then, come over here. Take this handle. You don't have to turn it. You can. And it should go into back gears, just like that. You're going to see a small drift pin right there. That will let you know that it's out into the back gears. Put your cover back on for your own safety. Um, you definitely don't want to get caught up in here. Um, and then turn the machine on. And if you'll notice, a couple of things happen. One. It's extremely slow. The, the squeaking you hear is a crappy belt. Uh, I have new belts on order. Uh, Lawnmower Supply Place is ordering my belts for me. But let me go in the back and show you what happens now. If you look, this spindle, let me watch my fingers here, this spindle is actually spinning slower than the flywheel, which is connected to this flywheel via belt in the back. And then this flywheel is connected to the motor. And these are, this is a step wheel. That one back there is not. Okay, now, let me um, stop the machine.
let this machine come to a complete stop. Now, if you look, you'll find that that notch did not line up with the um, notch here. What you want to do is turn this wheel, preferably disconnect the power, although I did not. I'm not one, I'm one to talk here. Take that and push this back in. And you got to get it lined up just right. There. Now, come over here. Push that straight in. That's all you have to do to disengage the back here. And then, if you'll notice, this wheel and this one will spin at the same speed this time. Now your direct drive. Now the only other thing I want to show you, if you're wondering what it is, this is the draw bar with a brass uh, spacer to take up space. Uh, it actually is stepped down here so that it fits in here and it won't wobble. And that is a draw bar for your, um, let's see if I can say this right, NMTB30 um, taper, which is uh, what this is. This is a, 30, a number 30 taper. Okay, that's all I'm going to cover in this video. I want to go ahead and get it up on YouTube. Uh, another uh, video that I will make is going to be on um, how the manual or the slow feed, precision feed they call it, works on this machine, uh, mm -hmm. as well as how to tilt the head. Uh, I will go and show how I align the head to get it straight, but I've learned that from a couple of other people, and I'll say who they are in my next video. So I hope this helps you out. If it does, um, either like the video or just leave me a note saying uh, this was helpful. Uh, and if there's something else you'd like to know about this machine while I'm learning, uh, I will pass the information on to you. Uh, I, I do want to go over lubricating points. I have not found them all. The Army Manual does point them out. Uh, once I learn them all, I will... Uh, walk through all of the different lubricating points. There are not that many. Okay, I hope you like this video. I hope it helps because um, it's the first of a few. Thanks. Uh, something I said I would cover that I did not was this um, plate here. If you'll notice, there are three locking nuts here. And then there are three um, adjusting allen screws. On the opposite side is the same thing. What that does is when you pull this handle out to engage the back gears, um, it is possible for you to go too far. So if you're having the problem where when you pull this knob out or when you go ahead and do this and you pull this knob out and either you, you can't get this to come out uh, or you come a little bit too far and the machine will just lock and what will happen is your belt will slip here and this one will freeze up here. If you see that happen turn it off right quick and push this handle back in just a little bit. If you remember, oh, let me pull this out like that. Come over here, pull that out and then I'm going to push it back in just a little bit here. If you remember, I mentioned the uh, drift pin that's right there. Okay, That drift pin tells me that I'm in a good spot for my uh, back gears. If you push, and you can, you can push this back in if it stayed lined up. Uh, if you push this in, it'll lock the whole thing up and your belt will slip. You leave it out. If you pass the back gear um, with this worm gear that's attached to this, it'll lock as well. Or if you have it too far in, it'll either lock uh, or you'll stay in direct drive. So you have to get this handle correct. And you've only got about a quarter of an inch um, of adjustable plate. You can adjust this plate in and out to prevent it from coming too far out. And on the opposite end, when you push it in, uh, you can adjust it to where you can't push it too far. 
So they're, they're just adjusting plates, is all those are. I wanted to address that before the end of the video. I'm sorry I missed it. Um, I don't think I missed anything else. Uh, if I did, give me a yell, uh, and I'll go, come back to it and readdress it again. Um, there will be more videos to follow, hopefully at least one more today.